Hi everybody, welcome back. I know it's been a long time since I made a video, but we're going to start things off in Unit 5 with forestry and clear cutting. So we're going to be talking a lot about trees. Um, we're going to start to save some time. Instead of a song, I'm just going to start with a nice forest picture that I found. This is me in Colorado in 2018. That's me. Um, I'm surrounded by the trees, living a great life. Trees rock. Um, and the reason that they rock, we're going to get into today, but trees cover, forests cover about 31% of Earth's surface, so a huge percentage of our planet is trees. And they're so, so wonderful in what they can do for us. They provide rich um, variety in habitats, so just within this picture, there's tons of different areas for animals to find their niche, to find their, their safe kind of space to call home, which is incredible. Just in this tiny little space, there's this soil layer, there's snag, which is like the kind of broken branches. There's all these different canopy layers that animals find their homes in. So it's beautiful. So some ecological services that trees provide, some of them we already know. Um, they support energy flow and chemical cycling. So these processes we've talked about, like the biogeochemical cycles, they rely on trees and forests to help move through their soil to their roots to the leaves of trees. Um, and energy can also move in these forests as well because you have animals cycling and, you know, uh, primary, secondary consumers, they all live in forests. Uh, trees also forests reduce soil erosion. They keep our soils healthy. Um, absorb and release water so they help with the water cycle they purify that water and also air um, they also help to reduce or um, kind of influence climates near them so they have a kind of a cooling effect and super important for our class they store atmospheric carbon trees take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen and they store that carbon so it doesn't go anywhere which is incredible and they've been doing it for millions of years they also provide habitat for lots of wildlife some economic services, which are more about people. This is more just like about the awesome tree power. Don't make fun of my tree. Um, so their fuel, they are, they get turned, forests get turned into lumber and paper. They're also used in medicine and food. They were used, we use them in recreation. So that's more, uh, you know, we hike through trees and forests. We use them to camp, etc. They also provide jobs for lots and lots of people. The people that cut them down, like this guy. The people that sell those trees, etc. Um, and trees can also be used in these different areas of, you know, society like farming, in livestock practices, mining, lots of industries, and in our housing and our settlements that we have. So trees are incredibly important for all life. Um, and a lot of really key logging locations are in Canada and Russia, Brazil, Indonesia, and the Congo, and the United States. Um, so there's a really high demand for wood. And it's across the world, we all need wood. And this leads to deforestation, as we know. But deforestation has a lot of negative effects. It can, everything that we just learned in this slide here is going to be altered when we take away forests. So you have less healthy soil and more erosion. You have a lot of runoff because you lose that soil. So a lot of things end up where they shouldn't be. Like a lot of chemicals and, and nutrients end up in water instead of in the roots of trees. There's a lot of loss of biodiversity because if you take away this incredible system, where are all the animals going to live? Um, there's lots of changes in climate and temperature when you cut trees down. Um, and a huge release of carbon dioxide when you take trees and, you know, use them for other purposes and they're destroyed, the carbon that they held is released. Um, and there's a lot less, or there's a lot more flooding because there's no trees to kind of grab the water that was hitting the soil. And all the things that, that we get from trees are taken away when we cut them down. We don't get to admire their beauty and hike in them. And the less trees there are, the less jobs there will be. So there's a huge disruption to the services that trees provide in general. Um, so when we talk about trees and deforestation, we talk about harvesting them. So they are alive and we harvest them for many purposes um, <clears throat> to build roads you have to harvest the trees that once stood there. So you, right here, you're already harvesting trees. You harvest them, harvest forests uh, for animals to live in. So they cut down trees so that animals can graze. You also cut down trees for agriculture so that you can grow crops, all those sorts of things. And all of this starts to degrade and destroy the habitat and lead to what's called habitat fragmentation. So there's a couple different methods of harvesting that we'll go over. 
Um, selective cutting is our first one right here. That's where you kind of just take some trees from a really nice diverse forest. So it's not all the trees are gone, you just take a few of these trees here and you leave some. So that's selective cutting. Clear cutting is what we talk a lot about in this class. It's just cutting down an entire forest and it's very ugly. Then there is strip cutting. Strip cutting is just taking a portion of the forest and harvesting it. So you're leaving some, but you're stripping away this huge section. And it's also called stand cutting. So that's strip or stand. And clear cutting, there are a lot of pros and cons to clear cutting and you can make the case for either, but it's really important to understand them and we call those trade-offs. When there's advantages and disadvantages, there's always a good and a bad to something that's a trade-off. So obviously a huge <laughs> disadvantage that Clear cutting destroys entire communities. It looks like this and nothing can live there. It's just sad and it's ugly. And you take what was once beautiful and natural and you make it not so natural. But there are advantages too that we have to go over. So clear cutting gives you the highest timber yield. So if you're trying to make profit, the best way is to clear cut. The disadvantage is it reduces biodiversity. You lose a lot of life and we're facing a lot of endangered species now. So it's scary to think what it could be. You also get the most amount of money in the smallest amount of time. You enter the forest once, you cut all the trees, boom, there's lots of cash. If you have to keep coming back into the forest to do little bits of trees, uh, little bits of forest, it doesn't make you as much money. But you're also disrupting ecosystem processes like water, chemicals, soil, all that stuff. All those things get disrupted. Um, so when you cut a whole forest, you can reseed that entire forest with really fast growing trees so that they'll come back really strong and you can in theory cut them down again but this destroys and fragments habitats so that no no animals can live there and especially if they rely on one kind of tree and that's gone they're not going to come back um it's pretty quick to establish a new set of trees a new stand of trees if you can plant the right species if you plant a species that loves light and you just let it grow it will come back pretty quickly um, but it also leaves a lot of gaps in the natural forest. So there's not it's not as, as as beautiful. Like here you can see this massive gap that will take a long time to grow back, even in a fast growing tree species. It'll still take a few years before this gap is full. Um, you don't need to be as coordinated when you're just cutting a bunch of trees down. So you whoever you hire doesn't have to be super skilled and you don't have to plan. You can just say we're cutting down these five hundred miles of tree and you do it. Um, and another huge disadvantage is that you increase water pollution, flooding, and erosion when you do this on a really steep slope. So these mountains here that have been clear cut, all the stuff that's going to hit these mountains is going to run down a lot more rapidly and create a lot more environmental problems. Um, so clear cutting is also really good if you're going to replant, like I said, a, a new tree that takes a lot of sunlight. So if you're going to plant a bunch of trees here that get direct sunlight, that's great because there's no competition near them. It's just this big gap. So you can get a lot of tree species that are, are happy in direct sunlight to come back, which is, I guess, a pro. Um, and a negative, another one, is that it takes away the fun out of life. The recreational value that forests have is gone when you lose them. Um, okay, so plantation forestry is a special type of forestry that the timber industry focuses on um, because you can just really they really quickly grow one single species and we call that a monoculture in general monocultures are not so great when you grow one species for miles and miles and miles and that's often done after you clear cut a, a beautiful forest so you have this diverse diverse forest like this and then you regrow it with something that just a monoculture of all the same trees <coughs> And this is bad because all the trees are, sorry, all the trees are at an even, even age. So they're all the same age and that's not good. And that also means that the trees are going to be cut at a certain age really quickly. So they kind of rotate in and out very fast. Um, and it's important to acknowledge that plantations are crops. They're not like these functional forests where animals will come and soil will be healthy. They're just made to grow and then use and then grow and then use by people. So plantation forests aren't really actual forests. They're just for their crops. So next I'm going to talk a little bit about palm oil and it's a really big issue in environmental science and it's very interesting. So palm oil comes from the palm tree um, and it's used in tons and tons of our products that we use every day. It's used in our foods, soaps, cosmetics and even as some biofuel so a lot of the things you pick up to use each day if you look at the ingredients they're going to have palm oil in them here's just a few of them um, and even as a vegan i 
have Oreos, I eat Oreos, they have a lot of palm oil in them, which is not good. Uh, because palm oil is not very environmentally friendly. So Borneo is an island in Indonesia, which is right down here. And it has a huge supply of palm trees. And most of the island is covered in palm trees in 1950. But since palm oil has become such a vital resource, it's lost so much of its palm tree cover. And this would look like in 2010. And even since 2010, there's just been this rapid deforestation of palm trees in Borneo. It's lost so many of its trees. And it's damaged the environment. It's damaged the animals that live there. This is an orangutan. I see sad Instagram posts all the time about orangutans suffering from this palm oil catastrophe. And it's intense there. And it's even encouraging... Uh, illegal logging and in because it's become such a big uh, money maker for Borneo and other areas there's more development going in so even more clear cutting and deforestation are happening to this island that was once this lush this lush forest and it's really feeling the effects of you know how much we want palm oil and the sad truth about situations like Borneo and many other areas including the United States is that the timber is extracted from both public and private land um, private companies often extract their timber from public land, which seems kind of backwards. Um, but most of the land in the United States is, is public land, but private companies are allowed to access it to log and then sell timber for profit, for money. And another kind of complicated layer to it is that taxpayers, you know, regular people, are paying these taxes that eventually subsidize private timber harvesting. So private companies get these kind of better deals on the process of, of clear cutting on public lands. And oftentimes it's super, super unsustainable. They're not encouraged to do it the right way. It's just to kind of get in and get out, do not make it the best and most ecologically friendly way of clear cutting. So that's a major issue. But there are solutions. This is not all horrible sadness and end of the world stuff. There are many things that we can do in, in our <clears throat> can consider in this class. The first being that we should protect the most diverse and endangered areas, which makes sense, right? We should protect Borneo because it's endangered and it's diverse and offers so many great services. We can also educate settlers. I know it's kind of an outdated word, but educate the people that live in an area about how to treat it sustainably, how to farm sustainably, how to, uh, f uh, to take forests down sustainably. We can also phase out subsidies that encourage that unsustainable forest use and encourage them to be replaced by sustainable subsidies that, you know, help make this whole process better for the environment, better for the forest, better for the animals that benefit from the forest. So um, the government, the public and the private owners need to work together on that sort of thing. Um, certifying sustainably grown products. So a lot of palm oil has this stamp that's like certified sustainable palm oil. So if we can encourage more things like that, then, you know, a lot of companies are going to have to force themselves to become more sustainable to get that certification. Um, reducing illegal enforcement or illegal cutting, which is, is really stems from having strong enforcement. So better enforcement in places like Borneo of that illegal cutting. Um, another issue that's more complicated is reducing poverty. So if you reduce poverty, places like Borneo don't have as much illegal logging because a lot of people do it in Borneo just to make money. They they think it's a fast way to get money, and it is. So a lot of people in poverty are turning to things like illegal logging to make money. So yes, that's like a huge task to reduce poverty, but it will be one solution. Um, and of course, we want to slow population growth. We know the effects of this widely overpopulated planet. If we can take our population and slow the growth down, then we won't need as many resources, including forests. Um, and then to concentrate growth of new forests in already cut areas. So instead of just focusing on, you know, the kind of that plantation style where you just grow and cut and grow and cut, focus on actually growing to create a more sustainable ecosystem so that you can have sustainably grown timber. So those are some solutions. And yes, this is an intense topic. There's a lot of sadness to it. But I don't want you to feel sad because there are many things that we can do, we can consider, and you have a voice here. You're not just, you know, letting this happen. You can become a part of some great change. Cool. Thanks, y'all. Goodbye.